This project has been in the making for, ooh, three years now, I guess, at which time my wife requested a dining table. But I love our current setup, this beautiful 1950s Formica table in lemon yellow sun, stunning accent domes with a finish that can only be described as surfaced rust, gorgeous two-tone chairs in red and I don't know what colour. The remnants of some adhesive of old tape. And this has obviously been used as a workshop bench in a previous life. Oopsie. Such character. So many stories. I mean, why would you want anything else? Just look at it. Beautiful. When I think of my delightful breakfast table, I think of a kaleidoscope of colours. I think of rainbows and buzzy bees dancing around a garden with abundant vegetables. I think of daisy-covered meadows and fields without fences. Very strangely, my wife doesn't share the same enthusiasm. In fact, It is time. A dining table will be made. I couldn't think of a design for the longest time until one day, sitting in a meeting, I scribbled down something that made sense. However, first we have to go right the way back to 2016 and we had just moved house and I crammed all my tools and things into a tiny space of a single garage and it looked like this. First thing to do was to make some space and fortunately I found that under the house I had some room and I could make some wood racks. First of all I needed to get rid of all the trash that people had left under there. I whipped up some wood racks while I was fixing the garden and that was great. I could at last have somewhere to put my wood and that freed up a nice little bit of space that I could start building a bench because you can't build anything unless you have a workbench. Of course the concrete wasn't level so I made bench legs with adjustable feet. to use Pinus Radiata to build anything but I had a lot of it left over from a building job and so it made sense to make use of it. I wanted to make this workbench as sturdy as possible hence I'm using pretty hefty timber and making the use of bolts and coach screws. This is the platform for my radial arm saw, which I bought for around about 250 New Zealand dollars. It's yet to be refurbished, but I figured I'd install it now, and that would save me mucking around later on. Pinus radiata is never straight, and so I utilized more bolts and coach screws just to pull everything into alignment. I just trimmed it up here and got rid of some high spots, and then I put some half inch MDF on the top and resin that, and that finished it off pretty good. And now I had somewhere to put all my gear. 
at last I had some space. Now it's time to go through a few of the tools that I've got and I've got this good old record 52 and a half wood vise which I temporarily put on the end of the bench but I think I might make this a permanent fixture. I've refurbished this and it's absolutely fantastic. I've got some more vices, this is a record 75, still needs to be refurbished. Someone painted it blue, I'll get rid of that in time. And these are my other vices. Got a nice little woad in here, all steel. Bought it for about $50 from memory, 50 New Zealand dollars, little 5 inch. In very good condition, the jaws were in great condition. And this is its big brother. 186E-8, five and a quarter inch jaws, and that's a bit of a beast, and I refurbished that. And then this is the, the big daddy. Everyone needs a good old record 25 if they're gonna do any kind of engineering. And this is my Evanson Rady Larm Saw, legendary New Zealand made piece of equipment. And I pulled everything apart got rid of all the rust and I use this wax to just to keep it nice get yourself some old undies dip it in there and do this every month happy days all smooth rails run really smooth good action really pleased with it I've got two vacuum units attached to this rated alarm saw because this is also a laundry, I don't want dust everywhere and this works pretty well got a couple of cyclone units there and I use these plastic bins and I've just mounted them on jacks the seal that I use is this stuff more a day special seal self adhesive, you just peel off the back and, and stick it on and that works really well I just jack that up and it gives me a great seal And for the collection shoots, I use scrap carbon fiber over the top of wooden molds. And I place one on the back of the blade as well. That took a bit of doing, but that's the one that captures most of the dust. It's not 100% perfect, but it's pretty good. And this is my planer, tanner, another New Zealand manufactured piece of equipment. And this took a lot of work, a lot of elbow grease to get rid of the rust. This is what it looked like when I got it. Covered in surface rust, obviously left outside a long time. Even had insect cocoons. It was pretty much seized. took a long time to take everything apart soaked a lot of stuff in citric acid this was the old motor it was completely seized I've since refurbished that as well this is a great model this one these big clamps had the big dual clamping knobs got everything unseized greased waxed and now it's working really smooth put a new motor on it a one horsepower motor And now onto the bandsaw. Yes, I got myself a bandsaw. Again, it's Tanner made. I paid $260 for this from memory. I haven't refurbished this yet, but it's in pretty good working condition. Right, now let's get on to some building. I started with the legs, and this is Kauri, a New Zealand native timber. This is all reclaimed timber. Still has the nail holes, a little bit of borer in places, so it's got a lot of character. 
and I made a template out of quarter inch MDF My goal was to make this fairly simple. I didn't really want any flash joinery. I wanted something very solid, of course, but I wanted it simple solid, if that makes sense. And so each leg has a single hole through it, which houses a bolt, and that affixes to the table top. I retained a flat section here because I need to drill with a large Forstner bit and I need the flat section to enable me to keep the drill vertical. very pleased at the performance of my planer. It really did do a very good job. For the top part of the leg I used Kaudi and for the lower part of the leg I'm using Matai. And this is a harder wood and this is the heart of the timber so it's very hard and it's got a really nice grain and it's got a, a deep red colour. I've cut out my two pieces of timber and now it's time to join them together. Now no self-respecting woodworker or engineer is ever going to take the two flat surfaces of pieces of wood, smear some gooey glue on them, slide them together and call that a structural joint. Especially if they were table legs. Would they? Of course they wouldn't, that would be stupid. And there's method to my madness. I have different plans in store for that joint. All will be revealed in an upcoming video. Some good food for my worms. I've roughed out the legs pretty good and now it's time to sand down with 120 grit. And as all New Zealand woodworkers would agree, sanding out scratches in Cody takes an immeasurable amount of time. You are just sanding and sanding as every little scratch stands out like, well it stands out like you know what. I'm 
quite pleased with the way the legs came out. Quite skeletal in form. They're going to look quite cool underneath the table. Thanks for watching.